I don't know why we've never done this before, but it, it's the number one thing I get asked. How do I play a beta? And you know, it's not like it's any different to anywhere else that we do, but it's just, it's a little more uh, competitive, a little tougher, a little more clicky. So let's hop in here. How to play Ibiza. Let's go. Uh, Ibiza is, it's the most sought after uh, DJ real estate in the world. <laughs> if you look in this image, I had to go with this one. Uh, this is what they call the Cabbage Patch Kids riots of the 1980s. Look at those parents' faces all clambering across the counter. This was worldwide news. It was basically just parents boxing the heads off each other in shops for the most ugliest dolls you've ever seen in your life. Uh, and really, you could change this out for any year. There was the year with the Furbies. There was the year with the Elmos. Yeah, Luke, exactly. We said it at the same time. Uh, are, are these Furbies? Okay, so this is a photo from the Furbies. So whoever wrote the Cabbage Patch Kids article stole the Furbies thing and lied to me, and I believed it. Um, so that's the whole point. You could replace this for any year. There's the Elmo year, the Power Rangers year. There's the every year parents are boxing their heads off each other to get at some sought after thing. DJs are the same. Every single year, you're boxing the heads off each other to get the same thing, but it never changes in dance music. It's always I beat that. Um, and so it's the most sought after DJ real estate in the world. Like I the the those slots are the toughest. They're the most expensive. You have DJs getting paid like a million a set. I, uh, it's reported that Calvin had like I I can't even share the figure that it's reported that Calvin Harris got paid last season because I work with Ashwaya and Hai and I'm going to put this training out live on the YouTube um because it's uh, it's one I think people who want but it, they're ridiculous. And so 1 million is pocket change really. Absolutely. And so Look, competition in dance music is tough anyway. You know this. Every club has too many DJs that want to play it and not just the too many DJs. So like Ibiza, it becomes 10 times. And so we've got we've got to play the game a lot cle more clever. Uh, okay, on to the next one. The beautiful thing is you got the usual hierarchy. You know, in all the training, we discuss... The hierarchy, there's the exact same hierarchy on the island. And we can use that to leverage our way up to the top. Um, whether it comes to clubs, whether it comes to promoters, whether it comes to venues, opportunities, you've got that hierarchy where there's the, the stuff at the top that seems like, oh my God, how would I ever book that? But that kind of colors your eyes to the fact that like if I hop into the iPad, there we go. Uh, like with any hierarchy, let's say if this is Ibiza, you've got like a hierarchy of gigs, clubs, promoters happening. When we think of Ibiza, we're thinking about these gigs. We're thinking about the huge ones. We're thinking about the, the main stage or the Shwaya in front of 4,000 people paying a million quid. And so we're thinking, how the hell are we ever going to get to play the island? But we're forgetting that, like, there's all these other categories of things that we can do, people we can speak to, clubs we can play with. And as we go down the hierarchy, the opportunities get bigger. They become more and more and more of them. And so it's kind of a, 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 a defeating self trick where you're like, OK, the opportunities seem really huge and they don't seem like there's a lot of them. Well, that's simply because you're thinking about the top of the hierarchy and it tricks you into thinking you can't get in there, but you can. Uh, so on we go. Similar to how we look at with festivals, each club has many doors. There's many ways to get into a club. We're going to break this down in a minute, but if you want to play one of the big clubs, there's loads of ways that we can attack this. And really, if you wanted to play any of the clubs on the island, 
you can if your music suits it if your music suits it and and on a music level it's a match then if you're going to put the time and effort into it and you're really serious about it and you're going to take action then you can play it might take a bit of time might take a bit of dedication but there's all of the routes there to do it you just got to make one of them work I'm going to run through all this. Uh, we're going to just look at some high level first, and then I'm going to pop into some strategy and show you exactly how we do this. Aside from many doors into every club, there's many ways onto the island itself. Uh, there's lots of ways that we could play on the island without having to book the big giant super club. We can play one of the many different places, radios, boats, smaller venues, beach clubs on the island, and then work our way up, which is like, it's the classic example of DJs going to Ibiza for the season, just getting to know everybody on the island, playing venues, playing bars, playing boats, working their way up. And I've seen so many DJs, even in their first season, playing amnesia, playing, playing big clubs, simply because they were there and proximity is power. What we're about to run through, the strategies that we're about to hit, uh, is, is really the hit list in action. We talk about the power of having a hit list. And I, sometimes I think it's lost on people when we say, okay, let's get 50 venues that you want to play. Let's get 50 promoters onto a list. And when you're looking at those 50 names, it feels like, okay, I know I want to play these 50 parties. And I have a list of the 50 promoters that run those parties. And it feels that simplistic. And the reason you have those 50 promoters names is because you, uh, you want to play those 50 parties. But that's not what the hit list is about. The hit list is so much more complicated and effective, beautifully effective than that. It's because those 50 uh, parties run by those 50 promoters. Well, see these 50 promoters here, they are connected to 200, 300, 400 parties, and they keep moving jobs. They keep moving venues. They keep moving clubs. And every time they do, and you're a connect with them, your connection goes there too. You can play those clubs. You can play those venues. And I think too often when we create our hit list, we think too small. We think, okay, I want to play these 50 parties. So I've got these 50 names. That's great. You don't realize those 50 names that you have are the keys to this beautiful career. You're going to see this as we break down the strategies today. Um, what do we got coming up next? Okay. Before we hop into it, I want to run through a couple of thinking tools that will be useful here. Um, that I was running through the train and I just thought, okay, let's run through these. First, uh, this one is big thing, little thing, okay? And this is, I think this is going to be really useful for you to think like this, okay? Quite often, what I see with DJs and everybody really in life, this is, it, it's, this is the obvious thing. Okay, you have a big thing that you want to do, okay? Here's the big thing. And then there's just, there's lots of little things, but like, let's say, here's the little thing. Now, when it comes to, let, let's use examples of booking clubs here. Most people, all your competition, they're, they're aiming for the big thing. They're trying to get into the big thing. They'll go for the big thing first. If you have uh, a promoter and they've got two uh, events, They've got a, a big one and then they've got a tiny little shitty one that's like it's happening in the back arse of Ipswich uh, in the middle of winter. Uh, nobody's going to go to it because the venue's crap. So not like nobody gets on to them about this thing, you know. But yeah, when this comes around, they get inundated. What I want you to think about is the fact that Let's say if a promoter has this, like, let's say when I did high, we did the season residency in high. So it was a big thing. And then we had the, uh, the same year we had the, the festival tour with Elro, also a big thing. But then the same year, 
We had like shitty pop ups in in uh, like a bar in Dublin just as for a friend. We did like a bingo thing at BMC, which was at the end of a pier that people never didn't care about. And that was the little thing. But if you're clever when it comes to hit lists, if you're really, really clever and you don't think like everybody else and you actually want to get the gigs, the clever move, go for the big thing. Absolutely shoot your shot. Why not? But in certain situations, you'll be much better off if you ask for the little thing because you'll get it. The chances of you getting the little thing are so much, it's just the, the odds are in your favor. You've got 200 people asking for the big thing, nobody asking to get on the little thing. Ask to get on the little thing, build the relationship. Guess what? They've got the same promoter. It's the same person, same relationship, same WhatsApp, same email. If you book the little thing, you'll still get to hang out with the promoter and build up a working relationship. If you book the big thing, same promoter. But the big thing is hard to book. The little thing is easy to book. So if we book the little thing, and then we use that as a ladder, and we work our way into the big thing. And you'll see why this plays out really well in this training. You're going to be able to get the little thing because nobody else is asking for it. They're going to be surprised. They're, they're, it, it's just you, all of your tactics are going to work so much easier trying to book the little thing, okay? Uh, so that will become apparent as we jump through the training. Can I ask into the, the chat, does that, make, uh, does that make sense to anybody? Or is that, does that seem, does that seem, uh, makes total sense. Okay, good, good. Especially when it comes to Ibiza, everybody's trying to book high when there's lots of other ways, long-term thinking. It's even, doesn't even need to be that long, but definitely slightly longer than, 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 uh, than just asking for the big thing and getting straight in, okay? So let's hop back into the training. Next thinking tool. I've got a couple that we need for this training. The A, B, a Z life. In Ibiza, we've got seven, seven, eight clubs. We'll count them in a minute. Actually, let's just do that, right? Let's hop into the iPad again. There we go. On the island, let's do a rudimentary drawing of Ibiza. You, like it's this clubbing mecca, they say, but realistically, you've got, let's say this is a map of the island, a really bad one. So you've got Yushuaia here, you've got Hai here, Octon, which I don't really count, but it was Sankey's. So they still might do something decent. You never know. Let's not count them out. Uh, you've got Pasha over here, DC 10 kind of hidden out beside the airport. Then you've got uh, in the middle of the island, you got amnesia, and across the road, you got privilege. And then when you come over to San Antonio, you have Eden, you got El Paradise beside it, you got to beat the rocks over here, and you got Ocean Beach on this side. And then look, you've got you've got some other like uh you've got some other uh bits and bobs here and there, but that's it. That's mainly it. And so there's not a lot. Each club has a booker. Unlike other places in the world where like we, we discussed, you, you might have a couple of bookers for different venues, but in Ibiza, they really just do have one club booker that kind of oversees it and drives the music behind each venue. But here's the thing, they jump around. So like if you're in Amnesia at the minute, the booker in Amnesia is Neil. Um, but Neil used to be the booker in... Uh, what was it's it, what what is now Eden, um, and also when uh, we was doing do not sleep and privilege was the booker there. If you go for the booker in for the night league now, she is the booker in Shwaya, but she was also 
That one was meant to be a Shwaya, right? But before that, she was the booker in Pasha. So the head booker in Pasha Abita is now the head booker in Ashwaya Abita. And before that would have been the booker in Ministry of Sound all the way over in London. And so what you need to uh, understand there is, if, I mean, if you look at her, you'll see she's in Ashwaya. Before that, she was in Pasha. Before that, she was in Ministry of Sound. So when you see that, you realize, okay, so this person is a club booker for life at the highest level. Not leaving to go and be a nurse or a taxi driver or a, is going to be a booker till the end of days, okay? And if you had of been in London and just pitching Ministry of Sound, as some of you are, and having success and playing gigs there, well, then all of a sudden, when she leaves Ministry of Sound and starts working in Pasha, I beat that. But you're just a local London guy that's been dealing with it. You're like, mama mia, you're absolutely delighted because now your contact that's been booking you on a regular basis gets you, knows you, supports you. Now they're the booker in Pasha, I beat that. How good is this? And so now you're getting a booking in Pasha that summer because that's that's your girl. Then she moves to Ashwaya a couple of years later. Same deal. You've kept in touch. You've kept the relationship up. She's on your hit list. So you've kept that going. Now you're playing Ashwaya. And so that's really important to remember that these people exist in that space. They're going to be a booker for life. So this is the this is what the hit list is about. It's not just about the fact that you wanted to play ministry. And so she said, yes, yeah, so and now you've got ministry and you're just going to keep following up and playing ministry. It's about understanding that's a relationship for life because you're growing, but that person's growing too. And you don't know where they're going next and you want to go with them. And so those 50 people that we have on that hit list that we're talking about, they're all doing this. They're all either jumping from venue to venue or they're promoters and they're building bigger and better festivals because they're all on the up as well. They're all trying to get bigger like you're trying to get bigger. They're all trying to do more fantastic things and you want to do them with them, right? Uh, can I ask uh, what is most useful about that? Um, while I hop into the next, or what, what's the most useful that you uh, about everything we've covered so far, please? What's been most interesting, most useful about the, the two thinking tools so far? Looking at the time, we might run slightly over here. Uh, while I'm doing that, let's hop back out into the training. And I'll read some of the comments in a minute. I'll hop on to the next one. Okay. So now that we're thinking that way with the bookers, I want you to also think about circling your wagons. Okay. This is another thinking tool before we hop in here. Uh, it's really important that you think about the type of artist that you are before you start pitching these clubs or trying to build these bookers or trying to outwit your competition to get these gigs. So let's say you are somebody that wants to play Afterlife, okay? And you're gonna go after the Afterlife booker. Well, let's look at this. What is the after well, what 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 are your possible wagons to get it to get in okay so connections if you can get a connection with the afterlife booker you can build a personal connection that's a way of getting that gig right that's a way of making that happen but here's the thing if you make that connection with the afterlife booker and he looks around and he sees nothing about you that shows him that you are an afterlife act well then that's not really going to work out for you, is it? It's it's going to it's going to fall to shit, and the horses are going to bolt. Okay, but actually, what we've got here is we've got some parking spaces, and you just want to fill them in. You've got parking spaces for little wagons, and you want to fill them in as much as possible. So, like, let's say this is your mix. If you know that you're somebody that's going to be pitching big clubs big festivals, big venues, in Ibiza, anywhere in the world, 
you know that now, even if you're not doing it for two or three months, you need to always have the prep done because you can't do it the week that you're pitching. You have to have a history built up. And so have you got regular mixes uploaded that show that you're the type of artist that could play Afterlife? If you don't, that's a big gap. The promoter is going to see through it. Have you got your socials to the point where you look like the sort of artist that could play Afterlife? If you don't, that's a big gap. You can sort those two things. They don't take money. They don't take expense. You just got to do them. That's your job. Uh, have you got uh, releases? Are you, if you're not releasing, I mean, you can't. Have you got releases that stand up to the quality of what they would expect that their other artists on the lineup are doing? Are you releasing with labels uh, that some of the other artists on the label have? Uh, are you... Uh, are you touring other venues? All of these questions are going to pop up. And basically, what you want to make sure is just that you have as many of these boxes covered as possible. This is the work that we do week in, week out. But don't expect to just get the contact for Afterlife. Do some of the clever tricks that we teach here. Hit the script and then have them check you out because you're going to get uncovered really quickly. Okay, so... It's always important to be remembering, I need to build myself up to be the caliber of artist that I should be. And then booking these gigs is going to be much easier because I just need the connection. When they check me out, they're going to go, actually, mix series looks amazing. I see it syndicated on radio shows around the world. Great. Your socials are on point. I can, I mean, I can, I can see what a great artist you are. Your releases are brilliant. You, you seem like an artist that deserves to be on this lineup. Because if you hustle to try and make the connection, and then the minute they get in there, they don't see that, you're literally just wasting your time. Now, you don't need to do that with some of the smaller ones, but uh, you will need to have that covered if you're going to go for the biggies. And then finally, the island itself is a place of connections. Okay? I mean... What we mean by that is, let's say if we do it via, do it like this. If you're on the island, your chance of getting booked is the strongest. That's, that's, if you're not on the island, it's going to be tough for you. The next from there is, oh. Try and delete it, what I do. Okay. The next from there is if you're somehow connected to the island. So let's say you've built up some connections, you've met some people on the island, and you visit regularly. So, like if you're going regularly, if you're going every year or or multiple times a year and you know people on the island, well, now your your chance of getting a gig is it's warm because you're getting there, you're connecting. Gigs in Ibiza happen through connections. If you're somebody that's not on the island and you're just DMing clubs and you're using and, and you've never been and you're it's gonna be tough. They're gonna see through that. They're gonna, it's it, it really the, the, the more connected you can get, the easier it will be to get the gigs. Like once you go away there, if you're not visiting rec regularly, but you're connected. I mean, you could still get gigs, but it's a little weaker. And it goes out like that, you know? And so the further away you are connected from the island, the tougher it's going to be. It's like Vegas. It's like places like that are tough to infiltrate because you need to be connected. And the best way to do that, to beat that, is to get on the island. When I went in 2015, I had no connections on the island. I had nothing. Um... I left that season having played, we hosted uh, Space with Carl Cox, hosted the whole thing, hosted Space twice, uh, hosted Sankey's with Dorley. Uh, a couple of months later, I owned, I beat the club news. I took, uh, I, I took half of that over. And so it snowballed from there. It's to this, where, where this day I work with every single club, every single promoter, know all of the bookers. All, we, we just completely infiltrated in in the the industry there and that came from being on the island i had to move there with no connections and just take the chance now that's not feasible for everybody but you want to get as connected as you can and so the way we do that on this call is through the hit list 
build your hit list, which we'll run through in a minute. And then if you can, try and get there face to face them. IMS happens uh, at the end of April. Every industry person is going to be at IMS. They're all just going to be chilling around a hotel pool. You can go up and say hello to them, shake their hands. The opportunity is there. If you can't do it this year, do it next year. But it's there, you know, and and, and that's really important. If you want to play Ibiza, it is. Uh, okay, so let's hop into kind of what this looks like when we stick it into a map. Uh, okay, so like if we look at this like a, oh my God, I got 15 minutes. Okay, sweet. If we look at this kind of like layers, if you want to play a big club, give me a big club into the chat. Uh, yeah, COVID taught us not to postpone. Give me a, a big a, a club into the chat that you would love to play. Oh, Johnny throwing out the space answer. I love it, sir. I love it. Hi, Amnesia. Hi was my last gig. I think it was 2019. I haven't, I haven't DJed since then. Uh, so if we want to run around it like this, Amnesia, I beat the underground. Great club. Uh, what else we got going on? DC 10, Australia. Okay, sweet. Are we all awake? Uh, let me know. Everybody give me a club name. Everybody that's asleep and didn't just type into the, the chat. The only way I can tell that you're awake and that you haven't died um, is if you type something into the chat. If you don't type something into the chat, I assume you're dead. And it's really hard for me to concentrate on uh, on teaching anything, really, when I'm afraid my students died. I'm not even sure if I'm covered for that. <laughs> Perfect. I died, but I got better. Sorry to hear it, Luke. If, you look fabulous if that's any... If that's any uh, consolation. Uh, good to hear you're alive, John. Good to hear you're alive, Clayne. Uh, Vladdy, that I think that meant alive. I right, haven't been to Ibiza since 2010. Not sure if these clubs are relevant anymore. Uh, what did you type? Amnesia, privilege. Uh, space is gone, unfortunately. Um, space is gone since 2016. Amnesia, and privilege. Uh, amnesia is. Privilege didn't open last year, but I'm sure it'll be back. Amnesia definitely is. Uh, okay, so when we look at the big club, if we look at, I want to look at layers of how to play it. Quite often, um, what we, what I think people think is there's the big club and there's the booker, okay? So what I got to do is I've just got to sweeten this person. That's my in to the club. And if I can't get through this person, I can't get in. But actually, there's loads of ways for us to play the club, okay? Because aside from the, the bookers there and the booker programs, the lineup and programs, all of that good stuff. But aside from that, in each of these big clubs, you also have the brands, right? I mean, if we look at high, yeah, they have their in-house nights. They have their black coffee or uh, their, this season they've got... Uh, was it Patrick Topping I seen just announced? You got the Martinez brothers, but then they'll also have like Glitterbox, Afterlife, and they're third party brands, right? And you'll have that throughout. I mean, Amnesia will do El Row, but it'll do its own Pyramid Night. So you've got a mix of in house brands and uh, and third party brands. So that's what we refer to here. And so any one of those brands is another in as well, right? But those are all pretty big parties. So then what people often forget about is there's all the side brands. Every club has the smaller rooms that you don't see on the lineup, but they're on the party, they're happening. Everybody in those rooms is getting an artwork that they're sharing privately. You're maybe not just seeing it. Like when with Wonderground, when we hosted High, uh, six times in 2019, we did the season residency. That was in the wild corner. And so the wild corner is this amazing room where uh, it's the toilets and high. Yeah, but it's this ama amazing room. It's open every single night. It's open 30 nights a month. And you have a different brand hosting that every single week. And all of those 
are possible options to book as well. And guess what? They're usually smaller promoters. I mean, I'm not a big promoter. Uh, the 22 people that played for me, they were all part of this program, but that's how they got in. Um, but like, if you look at who's playing those like in the wild corner every night, there's a much, much smaller promoters, usually local promoters on the island or cool niche promoters. People you can get in with much easier than you might be able to get in with an afterlife. Uh, and every club has these rooms. Eden has a back room. Eden has a room too. Amnesia has the room upstairs. They're all over every club. They're just not as advertised. And so we can get in through those guys. Also, uh, every uh, club uses hosts. So when I played the space, when we hosted Space Terrace with Carl Cox, um, that was, we were hosting the stage as Wonderground. So they would give us the stage and they would say, okay, can you host it as Wonderground? We'll use your audience to promote it. And then you can you can stick some DJs in the lineup as well. And so the hosts actually are able to put people in the lineup as well. But people never think about them. The hosts might be like, uh, there's radio stations on the island. I beat the Spotlight. Uh, I beat the Sonica. Maybe there's little sub brands or sub promoters around the UK that would come over. They would host one. And uh, maybe there's people on the island. It, it, all, it all depends. You just got to look at the bottom logos on the flyer to see that there's hosts there. Also, every big venue is hosting pre-parties for their events. So if you look at, let's say, Patrick Topping at Trick in, D, in DC 10 last, last season, that was, that was a pretty hot party. If you wanted to play that, you could have played DC 10 itself or they had pre-parties before every show. And so you can play the pre-party, which is an official trick pre-party as well. And so you're getting on trick lineup and you're getting on that rung of the ladder to work your way up. And they're going to be much easier to book. Can I ask into the chat? Uh, how many of them, give me a number, how many of them would you not have thought of? Uh, Arthur's show plays on Mambo Radio and Ibiza. I wonder if that can be leveraged. Absolutely. Mambo's huge. Mambo's huge. Absolutely. Now you're thinking. You already, that's your connection. When we talk about connections, that's your connection. You have a show on Mambo. You're basically there. You're, yeah, I'm sitting in Melbourne right now. You're as there as I am. Uh, what next? So what you want to do is you want to go to the outreach play. You want to you just do the fully booked training. Get as far as the outreach playbook. And, uh, and and run through, learn about cheese and all that good stuff. And you'll see how to use that. Uh, okay, so I didn't get any numbers off anybody. How many of those would you not have thought of? Let me know into the chat. One, two, three, four. Oh, four for Peter. Three. Okay, this is good. This is good. So you would have missed four. Perfect. This is great. Okay, perfect. So... Now, here's how we put into play big thing, little thing, because if I wanted to play, let's look at the side brand, okay? If I wanted to play side brand, well, look, they've got the big gig, right? Let's let's talk about Wild Corner and Hyde. So let's say it's some little side promoter and they've got a big gig at Hyde. If I mail them out of the blue and I use my cheese strategies and I use my value strategies and all the stuff that we teach here and I go, hey, I want to play high. Of course you do. When I had the high gig, I had people crawling out of the woodwork that I hadn't heard from since national school. Oh, how's your dog? How's your mother's hamster? How's your how's your auntie hernia? Is she all right? You know, yeah, yeah, they're all good. They're all good. Come on, ask me about the bit where you want the gig. <laughs> it, it, and people see through it straight away. But here's the thing. See those promoters, like let's look at like Melon Bomb, for instance. Melon Bomb play uh, the Wild Corner all the time, okay? But like Melon Bomb, if you look in the UK, Melon Bomb have loads of gigs pop up. So like, you know, let's call them other, okay? Other, other, other. I'll just do three, okay? If you look for Melon Bomb and you'll say, okay, they've got lots of uh, gigs around the UK in the winter, like the cold, dreary winter. Um, and so what I would do, when you think about a uh, big thing, little thing, 
I'd go to the first gig. If they if I knew they were playing somewhere close to me in the winter, I'd reach out beforehand. I'd say, hey, uh, I'm, I'm going to come down, love your music. Now, you got to pick people that you want to work with. It's, it's got to like everything it's got to be the similar sound it's got to it's got to be the right match it's got to be genuine but if you wanted to get in and play melon bomb in the wild corner take the long-term view go down meet them hang out with them let them know in advance i'm coming down i'm going to bring a crowd just come down say hello get to know them then after you've done that they've got another gig in six months time somewhere else in the uk i would try and get on that lineup so i would use one small thing to get onto the other small thing because if i've met them i've hung out with them i've showed them some respect i've helped them promote their first gig brought a crowd down and then i've said hey any chance i could come and just play back to back with you or warm up with you or or whatever in this gig you have in leeds that's it can i ask you to the chat is that an easier gig to get than high yes or no yes Yes. And if it's look, if it's local to me, if I can drive, if I can drive there, cool. I'm making good contacts. And here's the thing, like we talk about the 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 hit list. Melabon play pikes as well. They play like the, the cool gigs all over the place. And so contacts like this are worth opening up. And so you go and you play the leads thing. If I don't delete it, you play the leads gig. Now You've met them, you've hung out with them, you've supported them, you've driven up the road, you've played a gig for them in another place. Now you ask, hey, I know you've got like seven dates at high next year. Any chance of sliding onto one of those slots? Now it's much more realistic that you'll get on there. And so if you're going to look at some of these side brands to book the big gig, don't go for the big thing. Go for the little thing. Take your time. Next summer is coming, coming quickly. And so putting the effort in there will pay off, okay? And so that's important. Also remember that with these little side brands, you can, because they're smaller, in some cases, the, the people doing the, these little side clubs are just DJs on the island that you could book for like 200 quid. Book them. Even Melon Bomb aren't expensive, you know? Those side brands, you can book them. Bring them to your town, hang out with them. Go to dinner with them, party with them. Easy. If you're a promoter, that's an easy win for you. You don't need to, you can just book them, build a, build a, a relationship, okay? So that's that one. Let's look at some of the other bigger ones, okay? Now that we've got that concept down, if I look at high, let's say, Look, there's 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 lots of side brands, but let's say you've got three big brands. You've got Afterlife, you've got Glitterbox, uh, Glitterbox, someone else. You got Afterlife. My mind escapes me right now. Okay, uh, so if I wanted to play Afterlife, a Glitterbox, uh, here is some ways to think about that. First off, you got to remember. All of these have an additional booker, okay? So booker, booker, booker. And so you're opening up three new bookers that you can pitch and build a relationship with. But for Afterlife, don't forget, Afterlife have a world tour, don't they? And so if we think big thing, little thing, is it easier to book Afterlife in your hometown or hometown closer or somewhere so, somewhere less competitive than I beat that first okay and so like if we look at a world tour they'll have the EU you know that might have 15 dates they might have Oz that'll have five dates you know UK five dates Asia 15, you know, uh, you'll have the USA, you might have 20 dates. And so there's all these opportunities. Each one of those dates is a different club. All right? Club. And each one of those clubs has a booker, has sub brands that are playing for it the same as, as high. And let's say they have 200 shows a year. Like every club will be different. Every club will be different. But that's 206 opportunities to play that club. 
let's say if you're in the UK and the EU, that's kind of 20, 20 different shows for Afterlife that you could look at and you could go, hmm, I wonder, could I get on any of these? And so what I would do is I would pick your three best bets. One, two, three. What are the three shows that you could get to? Whether like if I was in London, do they do one in London? Do they do one in Manchester? Do they do one in Dublin? Do they do one in Amsterdam, which is a quick flight? Like where, where am I going to go for? And then what you want to do is for that club, do big thing, little thing again. You don't want to just reach out to the club and try and get on Afterlife. Do, of course, use all the strategies that we teach here to try and get on, on, as a warm up on that show. But also just try and get on any of the shows because you know that's a venue that has that kind of show coming. They're booking Afterlife. They'll be booking other shows of a similar level. You don't just book Afterlife and then have shit shows all year. So I would work those venues. Get on any one of those 200 shows first and then try and go back to the booker and work your way up into the afterlife show using the strategies and the scripts that we teach here. But what most people would think is, okay, well, I'm going to try and get on one of the other afterlife. No, try and get on one of the other shows first and then try and get on the afterlife and work your way up. What we want to do is find the venues where afterlife is playing and using our hit list strategies, find out who are the bookers that are booking those afterlife shows and just get on any of those bookers shows. So it doesn't matter which one of these 200 you play first. It just matters that the booker that books the afterlife show is booking you for anything else. Now you're WhatsApping. Now you're, 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 you're hanging out. Now you've got the relationship. Now they're on your hit list. If you were able to do that with two or three venues that had afterlife shows, now you've got two or three bookers that are booking afterlife that are also booking you. Give me a, 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 a clear into the, the chat if that makes sense. Uh, we are at time, but we're not at finish. So for anybody that needs to hop off, this is going to be uploaded uh, later today. And uh, for everybody else, we've probably got another 10 minutes or so. Okay, sweet. So for your sub brands, that's what I would be looking at. I would be looking at finding out who are all the bookers that are booking the world tours? They're all afterlife people that are booking afterlife. And I would try and get on as many of their shows in one way or another as possible and slowly but surely move my way towards the afterlife shows in those venues. And trust me, if it's a case that you're, it gets stronger as it goes on because you're able to say to each booker, well, I'm playing in like four other venues that book afterlife shows and my god like i'm an afterlife sounding artist so i would just love to get on this afterlife show and all you have to do is get one to bite for you to go back to the others and be able to say i so i'm playing an afterlife show in london um i'm all about it i'm playing other venues that have afterlife shows can i play this one and it just becomes more and more relevant it becomes more and more likely to happen the more you cl get closer to the pot uh but also once that's happened and you go back to, why does it keep deleting on me? You go back to the Afterlife Booker and Ibiza. This, it's going to be so much easier to seal this deal as time goes on. But remember, you'll have to have the circle with the wagon circled. You'll have to look like a, an Afterlife artist by the time you get the Ibiza Booker's contact. Um, the two other things that we need to, to look at here are, or three, Afterlife also have a label. You as an artist should be trying to get on it. Now, I'm using Afterlife as an example here if you want to play Afterlife, but you should 100% be trying to get on the label. Also, they have a radio show. Uh, Tale of Us have a radio show. Some of the other artists on the label will have radio shows, so it'll be multiple radio shows. You, as a DJ, you, as an artist, should be trying to get on there. You should be sending your releases to the radio show all of the time. You should be uh, posting your track lists onto Instagram like we talked and tagging Afterlife so they see you popping up in their inbox. They'll be resharing your stuff because we know that strategy works. You should be on their radar. And then, of course, they've got their DJs. You should be sending them your music. You should be giving them your love as much as possible. 
you should be just trying to get on the radar as much as possible whilst you're working your way up that ladder, okay? And here's the beautiful thing about this strategy. It is a long-term strategy, but while you're doing it, you're getting gigs in venues in lots of places that you want to play. You're just building out your career. If it came to the point that you would never play after life, you would have just booked lots of great shows in lots of different venues and met lots of other bookers who are going on to do lots of other great things. Uh, okay, so then let's look at the hosts. The hosts are the exact same. So like uh, any, any hosts are quite often media partners. So there'll be big websites in Ibiza. If you look like Spotlight, uh, some like Ibiza Club News are hosts all the time. Uh, Wonderground, we were hosts. So look for the media partners that are supporting them. They usually have like run stages and stuff. So it's the same with the hosts. Don't try and get on their big gig, okay? The hosts usually have other stuff going on. Try and get on the other stuff. So every host will have an everyday thing. So let's say Ibiza Sonica are quite often hosts on the island. They're the radio station. If you don't follow them, go follow them. Uh, and so don't, if Ibiza Sonica are hosting a season in Amnesia, don't mail them and go, hey, I'd love to get on your Amnesia thing because they're saving their Amnesia thing for the people that are playing their station. So their everyday thing is the station. Try and get on their station instead. Mail them and say, hey, I'm on the island on these dates. Love your station. Just, you know, you use this cheese stuff that we talk about. Use the scripts in the outreach playbook to try and get on the everyday thing. Hey, Peter, no probs at all, dude. Uh, we'll be uploaded in a, 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 a little while. And so what you want to do is look at every single lineup that you want to get on. Look at the bottom of the artwork to see who are the hosts, who are the media partners. And then what's their everyday thing? Are they a magazine? Are they a radio station? Uh, where do they have small little gigs? Where do they have little pop-ups? What are the buyers that they're working with? You know, what are the smaller entities that they're working with that aren't huge? Uh, do we contact them as our manager, a booker, or as an artist? It all depends, uh, Clayne, because if you're if you're trying to get the booking, try the fake agent uh, strategy that uh, we looked at last week. But if you're trying to like build up a relationship, do it as you. So like if you're chatting to the hosts, what you're trying to do here is build up a relationship. They haven't really got a booking for you, but they can help you get into the venue. And so you want to build up a relationship here. You want to mail them as you. Uh, and so that's the hosts. Really, that's a simple one. Just find out what they do. If it was, uh, if it was, I beat the club news. That was hosting stuff, and you wanted to game with I beat the club news. You want to find out what we're up to. We have a radio station. We have lots of li different little things. You want to try and get on that first, and then hopefully build the relationship up. For pre parties, pre parties is a great one, and it's a really good way. I would say anybody that wants to play the island this summer, short notice, you could do this. Uh, so pre-parties, there's three stakeholders. There's the venues that hold them. They're usually smaller venues, um, bars, uh, beach, beach bars, that sort of stuff. Boats, a lot of pre-parties happen on boats, our boat parties. And then you have promoters. So like the promoters usually that promote the pre-parties are sub-promoters, smaller promoters. They're usually work, like quite often workers on the island even. So very accessible, very easy to get to, very easy to chat to. So you want to find out who they are. And I would just hit them up direct. Just use the strategies that are in the outreach playbook and just hit them up directly. And if you wanted to think of it long term, I mean, all of those venues have other parties. All of those boats have other events and they sail like all the time. All of those promoters, those smaller promoters have other small gigs. And trust me, uh, they're usually the guys that, that are at the bottom and are struggling because they're the pre-party promoter bookers. Are, are, they're usually the small hustlers. And so there are other non-pre-party gigs uh, that they run themselves. They're going to be smaller gigs. And so they're going to be easy to get onto. They're going to be easier to get onto. They're going to be easier to get onto. And then these conversations are so much easier when you're approaching them going, hey, I want to play the pre-party for uh, the Martinez brothers. I, I know you host the pre-party for that. 
that's a much easier conversation when I've already played for you than when I haven't. If I'm a complete stranger, I'm just in the stranger pool. And I don't owe you anything. Whereas if we hung out last week and you played my my party that maybe wasn't, people went knocking the door down to get to because they were trying to play the Martinez brothers instead. Well, it's different. We're, we've hung out. It's an easier gig to get. Uh, give me a curl into the chat if 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 you agree. Give me a uh, 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 into the chat if you don't agree. Nice. Okay, cool. Then uh, the last one that we kind of need to think about, which is is actually a, a, a really great way of getting in with the club that people forget. They've got most clubs in Ibiza that have club tours. And so like if you look, Amnesia was in Studio 338 last week and you'll see they kind of hop around uh, in Dublin for like many of the New Year's Eve, space would come over because the promoter for Space Ibiza, Owen, he's a Dubliner. So he would just come over, he'd be back for Christmas, he'd throw it in, in, in Ibiza. You'll see the clubs in Ibiza having pop-up parties. If you're in a city in Europe, you'll see it all the time. Even in Sydney, I think they're having space parties. Uh, and so look at the city, uh, the cities that the club tours are happening in. They're happening in reputable clubs, but they're easier to get to. And with the strategies that we teach here, the, they're the type of clubs you guys are booking all of the time. And so it's the same. Just find out like what what venues is the club show happening in this winter? And let's start trying to book these venues. Let's try to get on these club lineups because if you can get on the Amnesia lineup in Studio 238 or if they're playing in Scotland in SGW, SBW3 or however they pronounce it or, you know, one of these satellite clubs that aren't the main I beat the club, if you can get on that and then hit the booker up and say, hey, I just played this. I'd love to come over and follow it up with an I beat the show. That's going to be so much easier to do. And those gigs are going to be easier to book because they're local promoters especially if they're local to you. Um, yeah, okay, sweet. And so there's a bit to unpack in that. But as you can see, all of that comes from just one club. So if you want to play just one club, you have all of those ways to sort of get in there. And as you can see, each time what we're doing, it's, as I said at the start, it's an island of connections. And what you're constantly trying to do is build your connections so that you can get closer. Everybody else is here and they're just trying to shoot straight away for the big thing. But it's the people who are ninja and instead of aiming straight away here, they aim here or here or here, or here, or here, or here, and we slowly start to work our way in. These are the ninja moves. Now, I know there's some of you in here who are just straight away hitting up the club bookers in Ibiza, and you should be. Everything I'm saying here doesn't, doesn't mean you shouldn't just do it. Shoot your shot. Like some of you have booked the biggest clubs in the world by shooting your shot. And I know some of you here have booked Ibiza this season by mailing the booker. So do it. But what we're not going to do is just be like everybody else, aiming for the big thing and expecting to get it. We're going to be aiming for the big thing, but at the same time, climbing up inside them and booking it. Uh, okay, any questions into the chat? How about for somebody who doesn't want to drink party as much, just wants to play gigs? None of that matters. I mean, we didn't mention any drink in, in, in this whatsoever. Um. I wouldn't even, I didn't even think about it, to be honest. Uh, my last three seasons on the island, I didn't even have a beer. Didn't even go, not even a beer. I think I might had two or three beers the last time. The two before that were COVID. You can do it without drink. It doesn't make any difference. The island's pretty chill. Um, When I say pretty chill, I mean, if you're a non-drinker, it, it makes sense. Everything's daytime these days uh, uh, as well now. So, uh, uh, what do you reckon about smalling, uh, throwing a small bow party? I reckon defo don't do it. <laughs> is yeah i reckon i i get that email all the time should i throw a small boat party throw yourself over a boat before you even consider doing it and uh, running the boats is cutthroat i wouldn't do it 
I, 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 I wouldn't do it. Um, it's cutthroat. The, 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 the people who run the boats have like a network of reps that are all workers hustling, selling tickets, undercutting each other. Um, even the boat companies can't compete against each other. They're like, and for you to try and hop into that pool of sharks and try and do it. I, I, I would rather eat this desk than, than give it a go. <laughs> um, but I would definitely reach out to them and host one with them. That's what I do anyway. Let them kill kill each other over the ticket sales and, and paying for boats. Um, uh, Luke, I seen your private message and absolutely let's do that. I'm going to copy and paste that and get back to you. Okay, guys. Um, can I ask what's been most useful about today? Are we a little bit more clued up on how we can get ourselves a gig in Ibiza? Is there any way to find out what pre-parties are running on internet early on? Not really, dude. You just kind of got to be clued up and pay attention to what promoters are dropping. They usually do announce like around April, May, who's going to be running the pre-parties and that kind of thing. Um, and if you search for last year and you kind of look through the socials from last year, quite often the people that run them last year will run them again this year. Uh Good wake up call to start with smaller targets too. Yeah, because we're all hustling together. The big people all come from being small people. And so everybody, everybody's important. Think little, think little and think big. Insight in general, as I'm new to this group. Uh, might, yeah, might be a lot to swallow, uh, Rob. You just keep walking through the, the training and a lot of what we kind of discussed today will make a lot more sense. Um, okay, guys, uh, that's it for today. Hope this has helped. Anybody that needs any additional help, long gone game is good game. Anybody that needs additional help uh, getting locked into gigs in Ibiza, the group is always there. Ask any questions, uh, tag me, and we can we can run through it. But now is now is the time that you you can book in these gigs in Ibiza because all of the big headline acts are booked. All of that is done. So. The bookers have time to have the conversations with you about those smaller things. The smaller things have probably just got locked in and secured. And so all of these smaller brands now have, have space. If you're going to make it happen for 2023, now is probably the time to do it because opening parties happen in about seven weeks. Um, but like even when the opening parties happen, everything's still not locked in, but now is the time to go for it. Uh, okay, guys, can you unmute and uh, just just give each other uh, some love, please? Cheers. Thanks. Have a great week, guys. Cheers, guys. Thanks. 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 Have a great week. Cheers. Take care, guys. See have you a super week, week, everyone. I will. Thank you, uh, I love it. Bye. I'll I'll see you all. Uh, I'll see you all next week on the call. I'll see you all in the groups. I've got some videos and stuff to post with some questions that people have asked. So I'll see you in there and I'll see you on next week's call. Take see you guys. Chill out, Mikey. See you. Have a good. Adios. Yeah.